So I started to show that you're able to make splits in your clips. One purpose for that is to remove content that you don't want, but there's also another purpose. So we'll put here in the notes. Again, all of these notes, I'm going to give them to you at the end of the day. You'll be able to uh, print them out, take them with you, etc. But as I write them right now, you can just check them out, and then I'll give them to you later. So uh, purpose of splitting clips to identify or to isolate parts to delete. Well, just like they, there's that empty spot right there with nothing going on, I want to isolate it and delete it. Another purpose is to uh, separate clips to rearrange their order. Well, if I was originally saying this product is really nice, it costs $10.99, then I remember, oops, I should have said this product is really nice, it's very affordable, it's $10.99. Well, I have a part over here that I want to say first. If I split here, this part is very good, clip, clip here then we can move it over here and move this part over there. So let's check that out. We can split things to move it around. In my case, I don't really think I have anything that fits that, fits that concept, but let's just see what we can do here. So Take out of here. curiosity, two lenses to capture three-dimensional photos. The screen is... Let's just, let's just flip that over there. So if I was going to do this, you don't, you don't have to do this, but here's the idea. I'm at 32 seconds. Um, I clip it here, and, and somewhere over here, I clip it here. I have all of these other tracks that are there with me all the time, sort of like as a temporary place. Because what I can do is, I can move this one to the top over here for the moment, and then move this one over here, and then move this one down here. So now, I've got something that I've said, and then the other part, and then it goes back to this part, and then it'll probably be further weird because I didn't think about how it connected there. That's the idea where I can split things, I can move things. So you see here moving a clip, obviously at the very end if I move it over here, or move it here, but I have these tracks at the top, and I just use it as a sort of temporary place, drop it up here, click it, select it, move it over here, click it, select it, move it, Drop it here. So to play it, the dual camera, as you can see here, the screen is an, uh, an amazing horizon and more. Two lenses to cap. So I rearranged how things were. I made some splits. I dragged the clips around, and now they flow in a different way. I had not planned to do that, so the flow of it might not make complete sense. But just to show you, it's pretty easy, pretty straightforward to do that, to separate clips to rearrange their order. You can drag and drop clips from track to track to change their order. Sometimes it's beneficial to add a transition uh, between them, transition or uh, animation between them. So the classic movies, like the Star Wars movies, there were these transitions, there were these wipes. You were on one planet, there's a wipe across the screen, you're somewhere else. You see the simple sort of fades. One character is talking, then it fades so that it's another scene. Those transitions, you can do them very easily uh, in Premiere and most software. Everything that we're learning here, you can do a version of it in almost every software. But let's say between these two clips, I don't want it to just jump right away. Cool camera, as you can see here. The I want some sort of animation, some sort of transition between it. We have this whole other menu down here, tools, titles, effects, etc. Transitions. We have this panel. With some common transitions, they're all grouped into various categories. I'm in the dissolve category. I have a stretch category. You get a preview of what might it look like um, that'll fade into that. 
we have what else? Swipes. If I click on it, you'll have here stars appear. What else? Honestly, most of these are too much of a, of a joke sort of thing, of an amateur thing. They're way too fun, usually, for anything really serious, like these things right here. You're going to have that. It's bursting out of the page. Okay. Most of these are not that serious. The dissolve category, there's like three here. It's got like 30 types of animations. Three of them, I would say, are like the ones that you want to do as a professional. They are inside of the dissolve category. Additive, dissolve, cross dissolve, fit to black. Basically, these first four. Mm -hmm. Because these, okay, cross dissolve, it'll do the classic blend from one clip to another. We've got the dip to black. You get a little fade out for a moment, and then the other one comes in. We can change the speed and timing of all of that, of course, in a moment. Dip to white is that one clip, then another one appears, but in between there is white. So let's say I wanted to use the this one obvious here, dip to black. Um, I'm in the dissolve uh, category. You can click it and drag it in between the clips that you want it to happen. So when I drop it right here, it says, okay, how long do you want it to last? I'll just keep it one second. That can be changed, of course. But now I've got this marker that shows this clip is going to animate into that clip. And when I play it, camera, as you can see, when I play it, you can see here, the, so I have, as you can see here, the, it was black for a moment as you can see here to switch between yes in order for there to be a, a fade between elements there has to be a split first mm -hmm. you have to clip you have to cut the, the clip yes and maybe I want it to last longer so I can double click it to go back and say make this last five seconds this is just to be obvious it won't look very good but now it lasts five seconds mm -hmm. too much but if I play it it's got a dual camera as you can see here the screen is in so that took five seconds to go from clip to clip too much but then if I don't want it anymore you can click it notice it's highlighted that's highlighted or that or that and I can delete it these other ones like I said okay random invert almost all of these other ones are way too I don't want to put them down to say juvenile but they're like something like this As you can see here the like screen that's this is like look at what I've learned to do um, almost all of them especially out of the dissolve area okay let me do a stretch like I had this one Victor? yes Quick question. Uh, mm -hmm. those as you can see here for dissolve, the screen do, would they bridge here the, pause the gap screen that might be a second or two do they actually bridge that they, they are a way to bridge clips together about how effective is it. That's going to depend on the previous clip, how it leads into the next clip. If it is clearly I'm in front of the Statue of Liberty and then over here I'm in front of the Eiffel Tower, there's no way I'm like fading them together so that it morphs, anything like that. If my hand is here on this clip and then my hand is here on this clip, well, there'll be a little bit of fade transition between them depending which one you select. But these are not like a, a band-aid to fix one jump to another that was very obvious. So they won't add time to the process. They would just no. use the, the original time that's there. Exactly. They would use what's already there. Notice it's overlapping here, half a second or whatever, plus half a second here. So it doesn't add anything. Um, it, it, it takes what's already there to do the animation. So the left clicks and the right clicks, it's like, so it just pretty much starts from the left click. Well, like I have here, I have one one, vi one clip on the left, one clip on the right, and in between I have a transition. So yes, it goes from this to this, and in between it animates somehow. But you could move your right clip over yeah. to create a gap. Exactly, want. yes. So that's, that's getting fancy. Yes, look at this. We can select this part. I can move it over, and it tells me you're about to add one second of mm. blank, or three seconds, whatever. So if I've got some amount of emptiness right there, then I can start Here. to put the animations in between. So I'll do As that, see here. do that, and then go to the other one. So depending mm -hmm. on the animation. But yeah, I can move these things around, give myself a little bit of um, blank space. So there's a lot we can do here. 
So again, garbage in, garbage out. If the original clip, there's just no way to match it with the following clip. This animation isn't going to fix it, but it could put some sort of visual interest in between. And I wouldn't really use it to try to match what's on the left to the right. I wouldn't use it for that. I would match it to catch people's attention about maybe a topic change, or hey, pay attention to this, or look what I'm doing. At first here, I'm talking about maybe the the mm -hmm. the quality of the screen, and then now I'm going to move over to talk about the quality of the camera. So that visual transition will alert people this is something changing, plus the text, which we'll talk about. But I'm showing you there that transitions can put some sort of animation in between clips. Sometimes it's beneficial to add a transition between them. Try to stick with dissolves as they are the most professional. I said try. If these other kinds of more interesting types of transitions work with your video, then it works. I'm not telling you not to do it. I'm just saying that most of the time, if we are trying to do something more professional and such, those first four under dissolve work best. We also have the classic fade in, fade out. That one is right click on the clip and then select the type. So maybe I want to fade in at the very beginning of my video. I don't want um, to start right away the screen appears. Maybe I want to fade in. So at the beginning of my project, it just starts like this. Hello and welcome to, to the Tech Review. Two. If instead I right click, fade, I have these different types of fade in, or fade out, I want to fade in the video so the visuals will gradually fade in. I can control how much in a moment. But it'll fade in one standard amount. Mm -hmm. I can also do the audio and the video. Maybe don't start to say my voice until it fades in. Have fade out. And then sometimes I need to do them both fade in and fade out on one clip. It's both here. But to show what this one looks like, fade in video, I get this marker that shows the opacity, the transparency of this particular clip starts off at zero, it's black, and then it fades in fully 100%, so zero to 100, it fades in. So instead of it being suddenly there, it Hello fades and in. welcome to the tech review. And if I need it to take longer, I can grab that little marker. And that's going to take a long time to fade in, which won't make sense based on my voice. Hello and welcome to the Tech Review Tuesday. It is Tuesday. taking I'm all Victor. of that time to fade in. This is the show where I review for maybe a really short time. Hello and what? welcome to the... Usually at the beginning, at the end, yeah. Hello and um, welcome depending, to the... Depending, though, on your aesthetics of what you're trying to accomplish. But um, instead of it just suddenly appearing, oftentimes at the beginning, some sort of fade in so that people can, you know, orient themselves to, to watch the video. I'm going to undo that because the problem could be maybe I don't want it to suddenly... Hello and welcome. To maybe I still want a fade in, a little bit of a pause for me to con compose myself, and then to start to talk. Well, what's happening here is it's fading in. The default fade in is happening as my voice starts. So. I'm at the very beginning. There's nothing behind it. Yes, there is. There's always the original footage. Remember, it's non-destructive. If you go to the edge of a clip, you can drag that to remove or to add. Let me show it actually over here first. Between, OK, right here. Between these two clips. Two legs. Between these two clips, there's something that's been removed. I can always go to the edge of a clip and see here. This is this is a uh, 
a red bracket. So it's add or remove. There's a red bracket on the on the right side. I'm working with this clip. I can grab its edge and pull it back to cut out this much, or pull it to the right to reveal what was previously removed. Remember, it's non-destructive, so I can still drag it to the right and return three seconds, four seconds, which was empty, that I had deleted. I can still bring it back. Or I can drag that to the left, and now I'm going to remove 2.18 seconds, so it's going to take it back like that. So you can always grab the edge of the clip and do a quick removal, or stretch it out to add something back. Now, in the case of my very beginning over here, if I try to drag it to the left, you know, I'm dragging off the edge, so you don't see it, but when you let the mouse go, it goes there. See here, if I drag it to the left, I'm about to return the, the original time that was there. Because maybe I want the fade in fade in video. Maybe I want it to fade in a little bit and then start to talk. But this oh, is the part where I have to go in and try it over and over. Where do I like it at? Maybe there's too much time I fade in. I'm still paused too long. So I'll undo it. I'll clip it a little bit. One second instead of two seconds. Then I have the fade in, which takes one second. Then I have a one second or half second pause. Then I talk. Yes. Also, all you have to do is, okay, I'm at the very beginning here, and when you go to the very left edge of that clip, you should get the, the left edge editor right there. When you click it and hold it and drag it to the left, that's what I get too. So then as, I, as I'm dragging it to the left, I'm returning back 0.15 seconds, I'm returning back one second. So yeah, you're going to go like off of the clip, you're just going to keep going to the left, and it's going to bring back 1.1 seconds. When I let it go, it brought back some of that time. So. beginning or the end of a clip and then you add or remove what was there and yes I would definitely recommend zooming in zooming out that helps a lot when I'm zoomed in that far there any movements that I made at that level of zoom out it might be too much I might move a little bit my mouse but it selects 10 seconds instead of one second so sometimes it's very helpful to zoom in you know I'm zoomed in here so that it shows one second two seconds, three seconds, four. Sometimes I need to look at things second by second, which when you zoom in further, you realize that one whole second is actually a lot. See, I'm zoomed in right there to fractions of a second. Zero seconds, 0 0.3, 0 0.7. I'm moving in at fractions. All of this right here is now one second. That's one second. I'm starting to see the first, you know, the first syllables. Or zooming out all the way like that. Now all of that is one minute and a half. So I constantly zoom in and out when I'm working with these video projects. If I need to isolate a word or a movement. So we'll say... <coughs> We just did fade, say, select the type of fade. Usually at the start or end of a clip, you need a fade to return a removed portion of video clip. Hover over the end or start of a clip to get the 
double arrow with red bracket icon or cursor. Then drag left or right to add or remove from or to the clip. So right when a couple of clips end, you can put your mouse there and it will either from the left clip from the left clip or the right clip be able to add or remove. So let's see, just let me fix something up here. I'll do a fade in. Hello and welcome to the tech. Okay, so let's say I want some text to appear on screen. Mm -hmm. I want that when I say the name of my show, Tech Review Hello Tuesday, and welcome I to want the it tech to appear Tuesday. on screen. I'm Vic. So we'll add some text. This is the show to where I review visuals. Wherever you have your playhead, so as you move this blue playhead around, this is where your text will appear. So I might want to listen to it for a moment to find the right spot for the text. Hello and welcome to the tech review. So it looks like I'm starting to say the word tech somewhere right here. So you can be a complete perfectionist and find it frame by frame. But as you do this a lot, you will say it's close enough. Uh, but somewhere here in my case, 2.18, this is where I want my text to appear. So we have up on the menu bar, text. Let's check this out. Text menu, new text, and then we have different kinds of text. We have default, roll, and crawl. So the default text will just put a... Um, We'll just put a, a little block of text. Roll and crawl is related to like in the movies, like at the end of the movie when all of those credits roll by at the end, vertically. And then crawl is horizontal. It's going to crawl across just like, at, um, like on a news broadcast where the stuff is crawling at the bottom. Usually, we'll want the just default text, and which can also be animated. But we'll start with basics. So in my case, I'm at uh, two, two seconds. Text, new text, default text. And then I get a little text editor box where I can type what I want. On the right side, I will get a bunch of adjustments for what the font size is and its uh, type of design and colors and all of that stuff. And I get a new item in a new track. Even though it's video track too, well, it's text, but it does take up its own track. In the project assets, you will also get that as a brand new item. Yep, I closed mine just because my screen is smaller. But yes, now you've got a brand new item also in the uh, in the assets. And this is going to be a little kind of tight on my screen, but on here it is. On this uh, adjustments area, I have a I have this select icon to move it where I want. And I have to go back to the mode to edit. So one is to move, one is to edit. I can change the font, I can change the color. Make it bold, etc. Align it. Because this is in its own, because this is in its own track, 
I can have this fade in or fade out. When I click away from the text, that editor goes away. I need to double click the track again. The editor comes back. So I have all of these things that I can change here. I have all of these fonts. Welcome to the Tech Review Tuesday. I'm Victor. This is a show. That text perhaps is appearing too long because based on where I say it, so can I fit this right here? So I start saying it here. The Tech Review Tuesday. I'm Victor. This is a show. The, the track here runs from. 218 to 826. The default, I think, is five or six seconds. It might be too long because down here, I say it at approximately here, would be Tuesday. And, and I only really need it to be visible somewhere around there. So that's, that's too long. I can split clips of text as well and delete. Or I can grab the edge and make it last longer or less to the Tech Review Tuesday. I'm Victor. This is so now it only happens for that amount of time. So any track, text track, audio track, video track, you should be able to select it and split it so you can do different things. It's because it's its own track, you have to select it first. Now, notice I have the video selected. I want the text selected. And then you can right click, fade in, or fade out. Okay, you gotta right click on the same thing to a cut, right? Or you have to select. No, anywhere that you. So, two questions, one at a time. Uh, when, you, when you click on it, you've selected it, and anywhere you can right click to do the fade in, fade out. As long as it's selected, make sure it's highlighted purple. If you've got still the blue highlighted, you're highlighting the video, not the text. As for splitting, anywhere that you put this playhead, and then you click the scissors, even though the scissors is on top of the video, it's just that you've got to have that clip selected so that you know you're splitting that clip. Question over here? Uh, you needed a little help over there? You need some help? Yeah. Okay. The only reason you split it is if you want, you want it to show up in, in another part of the video, right? The same text, correct? Right? No, I'm splitting it here because it's lasting too long. But you could make different parts of it show up different places, yes. But what I mean is, on this particular one, it's only... Okay, guys, that's, that's help there. Good, but then a little quieter, please. So if you wanted it to, I wanted it only to start from here to here, this is why I would split it so I can delete the part that I only wanted to go that far. Or you just shorten it, right? That's the same thing, yep, or just shorten it. I would prefer to shorten it, but I'm just showing that you can split video, audio, text tracks. And I think it's just a lot faster when you know where to split it to, just grab the edge and split it to there, or clip it. Yes. Well, once we're at this point, can we adjust the text and move it to a, a corner or something? Or will we have to start? You have to uh, double click it double. to go back to the mode where you have these adjustments, where then you mm -hmm. grab the little arrow to move it. I, I, how do you capture that little box and move it? A, for example, I have a like text where you choose, I have a little box. I want it to move it to the upper left corner. You just you do that? Yeah, just the arrow key and um, oh. the arrow icon and drag it where you need it. Or you can right click and choose select. And select it. So now what I've got is. Hello and welcome to the Tech Review 2 I'm Victor. 
Hello and welcome to the Tech Review Tuesday. I'm Victor. This is the show where I review. Yeah, let me show that one moment. Because I've got this now in my assets, I can just drag a copy wherever else I want it. So if I also want it to appear at the end, I think I also say the name of the series at the end somewhere. This has been Victor for the Tech Review Tuesday. So in my case, I also want it to appear somewhere at 1 minute 28. Well, I just drag another copy from the assets into where I want it to appear. So it's always about where's the playhead, this is where the stuff happens. And so I'm going to drag that text into the start of the playhead here, where I identify this when I start to say it. That's what I want it to then be visible. I just drag from the assets and it'll put out another copy. Does it affect anything if you edit that one? Yes, this is linked to all instances. So if you edit this one to change it to red text, it'll change the first one because they're all linked to the same original asset. So when I click OK on that, it changed in the original. So then now it also changed it at the beginning of my project. So technically you got to make a, another clip. No, it's still going to be related to the original. It's not about splitting it. It's about making a new copy of that asset. Right click, duplicate. So even if you make splits here, it's still originally going back to that one. Just like these splits over here are originally back to that one. So if I edit the original there and change it to, to pink skin, purple skin, it will affect it everywhere here because it's that one copy. It's more obvious with text. That one copy is affecting everything even though it's in different parts of the video. So you usually, if you're going to make some sort of changes like that, you can right click an asset, duplicate it, and now you've got a copy that is not affected by the other one. So now I can have one that's over here that's blue and one that's red. my original one, I duplicated it, which is red, and I've got my new one purple or blue. The blue one is at the beginning, the red one is at the end. Wherever you don't have any video will be blank, yeah, so then you can have text only. So you can have some video and then blank, but text and then more video. So yeah, you can get pretty creative. So those are some uh, little bits of text that we can play with there. And uh, maybe, hopefully, you've also kind of go in and say, well, what, what's under style, and what's under animation, and what's under shapes? This is complex software. And this is like the intermediate level. The advanced level, Adobe Premiere, the full Premiere, or Final Cut Pro, has even more advanced things like green screens and um, independent editing of clips and just a lot of complexity even on this medium level there's still a lot that you can do and you can create a lot of professional things of course Alright, so this, the thing about this, um, these editors is that you can have as much creativity as, as you can and edits and changes and so forth. 
uh, which is really cool because it uh, gives you a lot of control. I've worked on projects that had like 50 or more assets in there, different text, different pictures. We're, we're dealing with just video right now. I could import, I could drop in a photo. I can have a static photo appear, like on the top left corner, I can have a photo appear of something. Well, I would need to ingest or import or drop in the video and then drop it to its own track, and I have a still photo. I've worked with this video, we've added a little text, let's get a little practice with what I'm saying there. I can also import still imagery, and then I'll show you a trick with picture in picture. But I want to um, add a brand new asset. Uh, I think the way we'll do this is if you um, if you minimize all your windows let let's let's just do this first actually save we do have this auto save it should be popping up every 10 minutes or so and saving um, but you might not always rely on auto save so let's let's just do a regular save to save all our work and then I'm going to minimize these windows just to kind of go back to the desktop I've got some sample pictures we can borrow just to show you this example. If you minimize back to the desktop, I think you have an icon called Documents on the, on the left side somewhere. Double click that. Documents, and then we've got um, pictures. Do you see a pictures folder? Okay, click pictures, and then we've got sample pictures. We've got a few sample pictures. I'm going to drop one into my project. So once I've opened up my folder over here, I need to go back to Premiere down at the bottom and kind of rearrange my windows so that I see I see the folder with the with the images I found. I see my assets drawer. And step one, like we did at the beginning, uh, I drag one or more of them into the assets. And then I drag them from assets into where I want it. This will probably happen that suddenly it's really big and covers me, which of course we need to change, which I'll show you how. Let's say I'm going to drop in Koala into the assets. So now I've got Koala. All of these have the little green dot that show I've used them in the project. This one doesn't yet. And just to pick a spot somewhere, I can then drag it and drop it into one of these tracks. It doesn't matter. I've, I've already started to write text on video too. It won't care if I drop this photo also into track two. It's just a track. But I have track three over here, video three. So I could put my still images in one track and my text in another if I want, or use them all in the same. It's it's fine. But as I drag this and drop it in over here, where do I want it? Anywhere, but I'll put it on video three. And what happens is it's huge. It's covering everything. You see you can grab the corner and resize it. And so now I'm going to have. Uh, I'm going to have my video playing. Text appears. My, my video keeps playing. This well, photo will appear. <coughs> the video will keep playing. So my video will always be there. But on top of it, because of the layers of these tracks, from top to bottom, all of these things appear. And it's like actual paper. Obviously, this paper is covering this paper. So in the order of this, if I've got koala like this, there's a part here where koala is covering title, which is covering the video, which I don't like how that looks, so I just rearrange them or move them so that they don't overlap, whatever. <laughs> And related to that, here's something really advanced. What if I drag the same clip on top of the same clip? It'll let me do that. And I can do 
a video on top of a video. I can have the picture in picture by having one video on top of another video. So I'm going to say, let's talk to an expert. And then I appear in the corner. Now, both of them have an audio track. The case is a. So. This is a great smart fit. So that, that's not what I want, but I can, I can delete the audio and leave only the video. You see, I've got the same video, but in its own track on top of another video. We can get very complex. I'm getting too complex. Let me undo that. But um, the idea is that all of these various assets, I can um, just undo that. All of these various assets, they exist in their own track. You can edit them independently. You can do fancy things. Each. I've noticed that under Add Media in this class, it behaves a little weird than, than what I would do when I go to Add Media and I say, let's go get this video clip. For some people, it then opens up another sort of editor selector or something. And for some, it just does it. So uh, that'll get you that same result as just a drag and drop, which I think the drag is just you know, drop it in. Here, it's going to open up more submenus and options and so forth. I just think it's easier to drop them in. Also, double click on the assets. That'll open up the file. Um, the double click where? Double click in your assets and the empty assets file. This this is the same as if I were to go over to one of these. Definitely now. However, because it's it's similar to what this is over here, I think for some people it'll do that problem about if you're trying to select something. I've noticed for some it's going to try to open this other sort of browser to scan your whole flash drive. So I've seen that before, which is weird. But if it doesn't, that's good. That's another fast way to do it. Kind of like, like Photoshop. You double click yeah. that to open it. Yeah. So there's lots of ways to ingest or import these things. Drag it in, drop it in, double click, um, add media. The cool thing is, is all of these separate pieces come together, the sum of the parts, to make a new whole. Yeah. So like when people do YouTube videos, like at the end of a video, it'll have that's slightly different um, vi uh, YouTube itself has a feature that lets you do that the catch is um, I'll write it in the notes here if you're gonna be uploading YouTube video I would recommend to add 20 seconds of emptiness at the end of your video so that YouTube can do that to put all of those clickable videos because it's not that we add exactly the picture-in-picture -picture effect here. YouTube does it in the YouTube system. So we need like some empty space for it to do that. We'll say tip. If you upload to YouTube and want preview thumbnails at the end, add 20 seconds to your video so it has space to do that. You do this as an, it's called an end screen in your YouTube uh, control panel. And does your video go right? on your channel? On your channel, um, you, you link it to your things, your playlists, your videos, your websites. You can do this for other people's videos, but um, that's when you get into the the aspect of like the ad, the Google ads and such to pay to put your video on other people's videos or their videos on yours and so forth. It's more about like you watched my video here. Why not also watch my other video? So the um, what I mean in this case is like in my case I've got. In my case, I've got you Tuesday. See you next time. I've got that. And there's no. No blank space. 
space at the end. There, there is some blank space. This text right here is visible. What I mean is there's no video. So from here, you know, I can grab this edge here and drag it over to say, give me 20 seconds or whatever. So then now I could do that way in terms of it ends, then I've got empty, I've still got the name of my video or channel or whatever, it's empty, and then there's a spot here for YouTube to, for me to select where to put those video clips. In this case, it, the video title two, moving that to the right, you actually did added time. Your timeline. I increased my timeline exactly. Yeah. So because I have, um, I have an asset that I want to display. It has to display. It doesn't need to be below something, so it's empty. I could also here add, give me some emptiness. So now there's going to be this emptiness until it actually ends. That's another way. But usually, I might not want it completely blank. I want still some of my branding or maybe a. See, now that didn't have the time in your timeline. Yeah, there's sometimes like this little glitch. I bet stay. if I save it and open it again, it time. should fix it. But sometimes that happens when you move this around, it gets confused about where does it actually end. So that's why I usually don't do it that way. I do it via the actual assets on screen because then it knows to add or remove. It's easy to fix. One way is see, I'm, I like to zoom out all the way sometimes. So, right, if you zoom in, zoom out, there's also an icon right here fit to visible timeline, which is backslash. If you backslash, not forward slash, backslash, right above the, right below backspace. If you use the backslash, you can zoom out all the way so you can make a click and drag to make a box around everything. Because there is a control A to select all, but that selects all, including your text, which you may or may not want. If you, let's see, is there any right click, right click, select, maybe, right click. So I usually zoom out all the way with the backslash, and then you have the leeway to be able to drag and drop a select to drag a selection for everything. So then I can move everything at once. We had at the top add text. This is from the text menu. And we had new text, and you usually want default text. Then edit fonts, colors, etc. Double click a text track to get back to editing it. Tip, right click in assets to duplicate. And you can do this to anything a, a video clip, a, a graphic. Often with text, you're going to make different copies of your text assets because one version is going to be one size and color, and one's going to be another. And if they're the same one, they will both affect each other. That's when the easiest thing is control A on the keyboard to select all, and then everything gets selected, and then you move it all over. Which is probably also under edit, select all, control A, yep. So if you want to select everything to move, control A, select all, and now everything moves at once. Okay, let's take one more break, and when we come back, we'll look at music. Adding a soundtrack behind it all might be a nice addition.